this looks like a good place to do some computing with AI. I don't even have a plan. Let's figure out what we're doing today before I start to opine. I think what we're going to do is still use Poe. And I think what we're going to do is look at the bots we have with Poe that we haven't used yet and look at reasons to use them. I'm going to start by going, as we do, to explore. From there, I'm staying in official. And I'm going to look for web search. I have never used Poe's web search. Let's do it together and find out what it can achieve. What's going on in that show on Apple TV Plus called Time Bandits? This is literally the first thing that came to mind because I saw Time Bandits on my Apple TV feed a second ago and that's what it's there for. It's an epic reimagining, okay. How many episodes have aired so far? Oh, okay, it's already aired all 10 episodes. The release schedule indicates that the first two episodes premiered on July 24th, and then, no, that's untrue. 2023 is incorrect. Time Bandits was only released like a week ago, and we can't even see it because Apple's that level of aggressive about not letting you screen capture things. But so let's just say for now, I don't know that it's up to date on current last week's news, unless there's been a lot of ripples on the internet about that particular news subject. I don't know, based on my quick use of Web Search Poe, if it's a useful thing. So Moving on. This is fun. I'm learning a lot with you. Uh, then there's GPT-40 Mini. We've used this before. We tried to use 40 Latest once, and it didn't work. We're not using Llama, because those are connected with Facebook. We can use Gemini Flash. So I don't quite know what to use Gemini Flash versus Pro for, a Gemini 1.5. Let's ask them. OK, here we go. It'll just tell us. Optimize for narrower, high-frequency tasks where the speed of the model's response matters the most. Tell me, me, about something complicated. Complicated. And in-depth. And then provide commentary on it. Okay, it picked a good thing, quantum entanglement. That's all sorts of con confusing. Um, I don't know that it actually has a perspective on it of merit, but it gave me what I asked for very fast. Let's take the same thing we just asked for, copy it, go back, and let's talk to Gemini Pro. I think it was Gemini 1.5 Pro. So same exact thing, boom. I wonder why it chose quantum entanglement each time. Is there some sort of qubit bias? OK. It again did what I asked for. It did it a little slower. Maybe it's a little more in-depth. As I know nothing about the topic, it doesn't really matter what I read in that. So moving on, we got two answers from two different AIs of the Gemini sort. We've looked at these image um, image up. We've looked at these image generators before. But one thing we didn't do last time we used an image generator was try the playground upscaler. So what we do with this is we give it an image that's a little low resolution to begin with. It does some computational upscaling, makes it a little prettier, makes it a little sharper, theoretically, and delivers a new image that's four times higher resolution, technically. These are starting out kind of low resolution. For example, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm going to upload an image of a dog that was made in Flux Pro. This is a 131 kilobyte image that's very small. I'm going to hit enter. Don't have to tell Playground Upscaler anything. And we're going to see how long it takes to generate a new one. And I'm going to go locate that one while uh, it does that. OK, 
So the image that we have first gave our upscaler before it's been upscaled has a resolution of 1024 by 768, which is a pretty standard output for an image generator model. And we are looking at it right here. I can zoom in on something like his eye, and we can see there's pixels. Like, it's clearly a grid with different colors. It's not so much a continuous color gradation like a photograph is meant to represent. So now we've looked at our base level image. The resolution is set at kind of a low level. Let's see what the Playground Upscaler did to the same image. I'm gonna download that, and I'm gonna go open it, and I'm gonna check its size, both its resolution and its the way it looks. So over here on the right is the new resolution of our upscaled image. And on the left was the original resolution of the upscale of the non-upscaled image. So that's a big difference in terms of numbers. What does it look like in terms of different output of the image that's been upscaled? Let's look at it. Okay. Let's zoom in on that same section we looked at earlier with the other dog before it was upscaled. Okay, so now instead of a grid of pixels, now I'm seeing defined shapes and hairs. So it has been upscaled. There is a little more resolution to work with, and if I were printing this, I would appreciate this higher resolution image to print because printing has a lot higher density of, doesn't matter, but if you want to print something, you need a very high resolution image. I'm going to close these two. When you want to upscale something, use the Playground Upscaler. It's super good. Let's return to the Explore tab. Scroll down. I haven't done either of the Pika or the Live Portrait with much success on this video series yet. We're going to come back to them. I need to learn more about them before I show anything about them. We have these three models, which we don't need to talk about right now because they're just chat models. We have these other models of Gemini that we don't need to talk about right now because they're versions of Gemini, which is what we already used. But there is one that I do want to talk about that's still Gemini. Gemini 1.5 Pro 2M, which is short for 2 million. And the thing about this one is when you use it, you're using a lot of your compute points every time you press enter on a message you've sent this bot. But if you send it enough info, like a ton of data, in the right question, you can get really good stuff back from it. I sometimes take two hours of a transcript of my speech, maybe a Zoom call that I had with someone, and I feed it to Gemini Pro, uh, 1.5 Pro, 2 million, and I say, pull out the main bits of data from this that I need to remember in this conversation, or take this Zoom conversation where I instructed something, turn it into a lesson on my website. So I give it a set of parameters to do, with that very long transcript, what I want the output to look like. And Gemini 1.5 Pro 2M is excellent for that. Be careful. If you don't perfectly ask your question, you will get a response back from Gemini that's gonna be one sentence sometimes. Sorry, I can't help you with that. Try a different way. That's really demoralizing on a paid account where you just spent 35,000 compute points to send that message and get that response. So get your message right, send it to Gemini Pro. And then work with the output Gemini gives you in something less expensive like Claude Sonnet, 3.5, uh, 200,000. Returning to our image or our, our bot generators, our uh, AI models, there are various GPTs. There is a GPT-4 Turbo. There is a Gemini Pro Search. So that web assistant thing we used didn't give us good info on time bandits because it told me something happened a year ago that did not happen a year ago. Let's ask it in, let's ask the exact same question. So I'm gonna look at my old chat, copy the Time Bandits questions, and I'm gonna just basically take it to Gemini one point, no, Google Pro Search, and I'm just gonna paste it. This, okay, so this one is already getting more accurate information right off the bat. The series premiered on July 24th, 2024. The final episode will air on August 24th, or August 21st, 2024. We just learned something. Just again, based on very short anecdotal data, I would use the Gemini search on this bot before I'd use the web search bot. Continuing on past Gemini, 
We have the stable diffusion image models. We have various llama image models. Then there's this thing called Command R. I'm going to do the same exact thing we used at the other two web search bots, what's going on in that Apple TV show called Time Bandits, which is not an endorsement of that show, by the way. It's just the last thing I happened to think about before I typed this in. Oh, it's got all sorts of clickable links. Wow. It's looking like it's giving, okay, it's giving us really accurate info. And I like that I can click stuff. What happens if I click it? It opens it on Wikipedia. I like that. Ooh, this is fun suddenly. Okay, I'm going to come back and use Command R some other time um, for just different searching maybe. But now you and I learned it can give you good web search results and it puts it all as a clickable set of data. Let's return more to explore. Scroll back down. We have, see now there's this other language model called Mist, Mistral, which used to be called Mixtral, I think, but now it's Mistral. And it used to be a really top tier model when it was the only one that could do what's called a mixture of experts. But now most of those AI models we've already used can do the same things Mistral used to be known for. So I don't know what its big deal is anymore. But let's use it anyway and find out. Uh, I'm going to say, tell me about the Civil War. Pick your favorite one. Oh, I'm just going to pick, pick one. I'm not going to make it a favorite. Okay, he took the American Civil War. He, Mistral Large II, took the American Civil War. I'm going to ask you one more thing. What percentage of weapons were recovered, unfired, or jammed? See, if I was an expert on this topic, I could immediately look at this and tell you dates are right um, or wrong. I'm not an expert on this, so I can't tell you immediately if this is right or wrong. But I can tell you the way it's giving me this information is agreeable to me. It says here's some causes, here's some key events, here's some major battles. It's a top-down overview that helps me become conversant in a topic that I was previously ignorant of. And uh, as long as I check this information in some level, like vet it, even on Wikipedia is better than not, I will be better off than if I just trust the AI 100%. So now I'm going to ask it a follow-up question. Notice I'm not asking anything about the war. I'm asking a follow-up question to that thing, and it will understand my context is about the Civil War. And I'm asking this because I read a book once that said close to 30 to 50% of weapons on the Civil War battlegrounds were found unfired, which is indicative of not the most motivated set of troops. All right. We can look at another um, bot, and let's scroll down past Mistral. This is a Rekka Core. I don't know what that is. It's a large multimodal language model. Okay, let's take the one it's saying. Explain the concept of black holes in a way that a 10-year-old would understand. Okay, it's kind of con conversational, the way it starts with the phrase like, all right. I'm noticing it's kind of slow, is a relative term, but I can practically read as fast as it's writing, so it's kind of slow relatively in that sense. Oh, good. It's making me feel good. It's a 10-year-old's assuagement is, is also included in this. Anyway, I'm also going to look at the other after Rekka Core. Was that what that one was? Rekka Core. Then there's the supercharged version of Command R. What did we just ask Command R last time? Let's look in our saved chats. Time Bandits. Let's see. I'm going to ask this. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to ask Rekka or Command R Super Plus this one, about the same question. Let's see if it gives us a significantly different answer. It's certainly taking longer. Taking much longer. 
and it's more concise. Okay, what's this? Takes us right to IMDb, Time Bandits. What's this? Wikipedia entry? Oh, it opened it up in Apple, wow. Whoa, that's kind of aggressive. Fascinating. Well, all right. We're learning stuff together today. Uh, Command R Plus. You can become a knowledgeable expert on anything quickly. Uh, I mean, that's about it. All these, oh, Mythomax. I've, nev I've never used Mythomax. Um, it's good at role playing and story writing. I'm a dungeon master. And tonight is D&D &D night. Dungeons and Dragon night. Help me prepare a good scenario. That involves orcs, cannons that shoot goo, and the Hyatt. I looked up and I just saw the Hyatt. You and your fellow adventurers have been hired by the wealthy owner of the Hyatt to retrieve a stolen artifact from a nearby orc stronghold. The artifact is a mystical, magical cannon capable of shooting a mysterious green goo that has strange effects on those it touches. Okay. Well, that's this one that helps us create mythical scenarios. And I'm sure you can do a lot more with it if you had a proper set of imaginative uh, synapses. Okay, we went through all of them. Except this, but it's smaller and faster and more powerful and it's been here for like a year, so I'm not bothering with it because I'm biased. I had a good time exploring these with you. Thank you for this quick little, I'm gonna call it an escapade into AI. So I guess I'll be on my way now. I'm glad you were here. Thank you.